Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming today. Very, uh, very exciting stuff. I'm going to just get my screen all ready for you so it's nice and pretty. And here we go. So I'll just uh, I'll wait for a quick thumbs up or a or a yay uh, from Cassandra just to know that we're all we're all seeing what I'm seeing. We so are. You're good. Amazing. Okay. So yeah, I, I just want to reiterate. Um, I want to encourage everybody today to ask questions about anything that I say at any point in time, anything that I mention, anything that comes to mind, because uh, I do want this to be not just me talking at you. I know I can't see you, but I definitely want to hear you through the chat. So please interrupt me uh, via the chat, and we'll have all those questions come in. We don't have uh, we don't have an infinite amount of time together, but I do want to converse as much as possible here. I think this will be uh, the most helpful for you if we can have a bit of a dialogue back and forth that way. So I'm sharing things with you about my own life. I already know all of these things. So I want you to know as much about what I know as possible. I was the person who commented knowledge sharing in the Kahoot earlier. So that's what I'm here to do today. Great to see you all. Uh, we're gonna hop right into it. Today we're talking about success, but also the partner of success, which is failure. And I want to kind of dispel maybe this myth that failure is bad or that it has no place in our lives. So we're talking about this dichotomy today. Dichotomy meaning just to, to split into two things, and that is success and failure. So along your path to achieving success, you are very likely going to have to manage failure along the way. We're gonna see a lot of different dichotomies throughout the day. Um, or a lot of different interplays between different concepts, but the big one is success versus failure. And they are not fighting with each other, but they're actually working together. We're gonna be sprinkling a lot of quotes throughout this presentation as well. And so I want to make sure uh, that if any of those, uh, oopsie daisy, if any of those quotes uh, really sinks in for you, that you can maybe just quickly jot those down or take a picture of your screen, you can do that as well. So first quote of the day, if you find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere. Frank A. Clark, American lawyer and politician. This is gonna come back time and again throughout the day, so I want this to really sink in. Okay, so first things first, I wanna give you a bit of a, a sense of what my academic path has been like. Uh, the, the first slide of the presentation actually said, uh, what does it say specific? It said a nonlinear pathway to success. That is because uh, this is just one of the paths that has been lived by one individual, and we are all individuals ourselves. So as you can see here, this is kind of a nonlinear path. Uh, there's a lot of exclamation marks which punctuate different moments in time where I had to make big decisions. So you'll notice first and foremost that there are six different blocks connected here, and there are dotted lines leading in and out of them. The dotted lines at the beginning indicate everything up to the end of high school, at which point I realized in my life that I wanted to become an astrophysics professor. That's where I was at, astrophysics professor. Now, when it came time to uh, apply to different CEGEPs, which for those of you who are not in Quebec right now, uh, CEGEP is this two-year intermediate between the end of high school and the beginning of the university. When I was looking to apply to CEGEP, I consulted my family, telling them that I wanted to be an astrophysics professor and I wanted to pursue this path. My sister turned to me, she said, Jeremy, you're not smart enough for science. And so I basically took her advice and decided not even to apply into the science stream. Instead, I figured, let me just try the commerce route, which involved business, economics, and all that jazz. So I started the program in commerce and a couple weeks in, I realized I was not in the right place. Not that I had gone to the wrong building, but just in my life, I realized commerce was not going to be the thing for me. So unfortunately, I had to finish the rest of that semester before I could move on. But in the meantime, I applied to science, much to my sister's chagrin. I got in, got to put that in her face, which was a great moment. And then I continued on back onto this path towards astrophysics professorship. So I finished the program in science, applied to physics at McGill University, got into that program. And then a few weeks into physics, I started to have the same feelings I did in commerce, feeling like I wasn't in the right place. And so I had to make a decision. Do I continue in the program, finish something that I started, continue on this path, this, this dream that I had set out for myself, or do I make another switch? For fear of hitting this patterned behavior of quitting too early, I really struggled with this. But eventually I made the decision to put my enjoyment of life ahead of everything else. And I wasn't enjoying myself in physics. 
So I tried to do a second semester to prove to myself that it was absolutely not the right decision to stay in. And I decided at the end of that second semester to leave the program. So I left physics, I went into cognitive science, huge, huge shift from pure physics into the brain sciences, but it was one of the best decisions I ever made. I had a lunch with a friend of mine when I was telling him about my struggles with physics, and he was finishing this program in cognitive science. And he said, Jeremy, go check this out, check out the courses, it might be up your alley. And it absolutely was. And I'll tell you, if you haven't started university yet, or if you're thinking about changing programs, check out your local cognitive science program because it is absolutely incredible it involves things like neuroscience psychology philosophy linguistics i took some courses in anthropology computer science it was amazing it was perfect for somebody like me who doesn't really know what they want in life keeps on vacillating back and forth between different options and so i finished a degree in cognitive science focusing in psychology i applied to a master's degree in psychology and then a few months into my master's degree in psychology, I had the same feeling that I felt twice already. And it was getting annoying, I'll be honest. I, I felt like I wasn't in the right place. I was enjoying certain aspects of the program, but there were other aspects that I really didn't like, like mainly the research, which was a huge component of the program. What I did like, though, was the teaching aspect and the communicating with people every day. I started a podcast during this time, and I was interviewing fellow graduate students on their research. I'm still doing that today. And so that is one amazing thing that came out of this master's degree in psychology that I didn't actually finish. So I withdrew from the program. I got an absolutely horrendous evaluation from my supervisor. It was the nail in the coffin and I left. And I applied to a teaching and learning degree at McGill, which is my current program today. I finished in December and then I become a math teacher at the high school level which is kind of funny because it's similar to my initial dream of becoming an astrophysics professor. It's still in the realm of education, but at a different level and in a different topic. So why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all of this because if you are currently on an academic path or a life path that feels nonlinear, where you keep having to quit or leave or make difficult decisions, you're not alone. I, real human being in the flesh, have experienced something akin to what you are. And even if your path looks nothing like mine, I hope that you can learn a little bit about what I'm going to share today, which is all of the things that I've learned along this highly non-linear path. So let's hop into it. 